How to import static meshes with C++ in Unreal Because, well, if you're creating a pipeline in Unreal, you're probably going to need to import a static mesh at some point, so let's get to it. But before we start, this video is going to reuse some code we wrote in the video 3 of the series, so I recommend to go see that one, but if you don't want to, this is how the code looks like. So now I'm here in my header file, as usual, a simple header file in which I'm going to add a new function to import a static mesh. And what this function is going to do is actually super simple, we're simply going to create and process process an import task specifically made for a static mesh. Actually, it's just going to be a simple import task in which we can feed more options to customize the import of the static mesh, the same way we are doing when we are importing a static mesh normally in Unreal. So we drag the FBX in Unreal and it's going to pop up the FBX import options window. And in that window, you have a bunch of settings. And these settings are all the settings we're going to be able to customize today inside our import static mesh function. So a pretty simple function that's going to let us set a lot of settings. As input, we need the source path, the path of the FBX file we want to import, and a destination path where we want to save the static mesh inside the content browser, obviously. And as return, I'm going to return this static mesh that we just imported if the import succeeded. And since here I'm using a new class that was not defined anywhere else before, I'm just going to forward declare it at the top just to make sure that it doesn't cause any issues. And that's it for the header file. Now let's jump in the CPP. And in here, we're going to start with the includes. The first include is going to be the code we wrote in the video tree of the series. So here it is. And then we have the classes we need to set all the different import settings. So first we have the FBX import UI and also we have the FBX static mesh import data, which are both inside the Unreal ED module. So let's go check inside the build.cs file to make sure that the Unreal ED module is included already. And here it is. I have my Unreal ED module. So that's pretty good. Now we can go back in the CPP to focus on the logic of the function. And the core of the function is actually super simple since we already did it in the previous video. So we're simply going to create an import tasks right here using the function that we created in the previous video. Then we're going to process the import task. So process the import task right here that I can simply convert into a static mesh to be able to return it at the end of the function. And that's what we're going to do. We're simply going to return the static mesh right here at the end once it's imported. So yeah, none of that is really new. We just are going to create an import task, process it, and then return the asset at the end as before. But the only thing that's different is the options parameter right here. And it's inside that variable that that all the import settings are going to be. So this variable options right here is an optional parameter, but in our case, we're going to use it to modify the import behavior. So to do that, we need to create the import option object that we have right here. Using the FBX import UI class, we're going to create a new object of that class. That object is just going to contain a bunch of settings. And that's mainly what we're going to do inside this function right here. We're going to set a bunch of settings. And the first batch of settings are all the settings that's going to tell the importer that we want to import a static mesh and nothing else because in your FBX, if you have a skeletal mesh, animations, or anything else, the importer by default is going to try to guess which import type you want to do. But in our case, we don't want the importer to guess by itself. We want to force it to be a static mesh. So that's what we're going to do right here. I'm going to disable the auto detect of the import type right here. So I'm setting it to false. And then I'm going to force the import type to be a static mesh. Here we go. Now we're going to import a static mesh. And obviously, if we want to import a static mesh, we're going to need to import the mesh. Otherwise, it's not going to import anything. And that's not good. So let's import a static mesh and make sure to import the mesh right here. And then that second part right here is not really mandatory, but I like to be super specific with my code. And that's why I'm going to tell specifically that I don't want to import a skeletal mesh, that I don't want to import the animation, and I don't want to create a physical assets for that import. Technically, when you're importing a static mesh, none of these are going to be used, but I just want to make sure that it's super clear that we don't want to create a skeletal mesh or animations. And actually, the reason why we have to do all that is because because the FBX import UI is used for all the different import types that you can do with the FBX. It's not like one specific set of options for the skeletal mesh, static mesh, animations, etc. It's really just one big block of options and then you have to decide which part of the options you want to use. And it's actually the time to do that. So since we have a lot of options, I'm just going to scroll down a little bit and I'm going to paste them all right here. These are all the options you have access when you are importing a FBX in Unreal using the FBX import window that we have in Unreal usually. These are all the same parameters, all of them, and you can set them to whatever you want. And obviously here, as you can see, I didn't feed any of those parameters at the beginning of my function. I just decided to hard code all of them. And that's just because I wanted my video to be short. I didn't want to make it super complicated and fade all those parameters one by one at the beginning of my function. But in your case, if you want the user to be able to decide all those parameters by himself, you can obviously feed all those parameters to the function. But anyways, these are all the settings that you have access inside the FBX 
import option window and you can set depth to whatever you want. So in those settings, you have import textures, import material, reset material to FBX, LOD numbers, import translation, rotation and scale, convert scene, force front X axis, convert scene unit, transform vertex to absolute, bake pivot in vertex, import mesh LOD, normal import method, normal generation method, compute weight normals, reorder material to FBX, static mesh LOD group, vertex color import option, remove the generate, build reverse the index buffer, build nanite, generate light map UVs, one hole per UCX, auto generate collision, combine meshes, and finally distance field resolution scale. And actually that's all in today's video, we really just set a bunch of parameters inside the FBX import UI right here, setting it inside a new variable, the options that we then feed inside the import task right here. So when we are creating the import task, we're feeding it the options, the options are going to be baked inside the task and they are going to be used when we are processing the task. And that's it, at the end you're going to have a nice static mesh and now it's time to go in Unreal to test all that. So in Unreal, as usual, I created a simple widget to let us test the functionality super easily. So here I have two parameters, I have my import path, so the path of my FBX file, so here it is, and then I have my destination path, the path where we want to save the new static mesh in the project. And when I click on import, I'm going to feed those two parameters to my function and that's what I'm doing right here in the graph. I'm taking the source path of my FBX file and then the destination path of where we want to save the static mesh in the project and I'm going to feed both of those into the import static mesh function we just created. There we go. So now if I compile this and I go back in the content browser and run the utility widget, it should appear right here. I have the path to my FBX which is a valid FBX on my computer and I'm going to import it right here. Now if I click on import, it says that it imported the FBX properly and let's say if I make a typo in my path, it should work as before and it should say that, well, the FBX doesn't exist. So that's fine. But in our case, uh, the first import should have worked properly. So let's go see inside the test folder because this is where we are saving uh, the new static mesh. So inside the test folder, we have the new chicken right here, the six underscore chicken. And since I said that I wanted to also import the material inside my function, I created my material right here for my chicken. And now if I open my static mesh, I have it uh, right here. Here we go. So I have my new chicken static mesh right here, which was imported by our function. Perfect. So that's going to be it for today's video and I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye bye.